So although you treat both hip and knee, we're gonna kind of focus on the hip today. So can you tell us what is the hip? What's the components of the hip? Uh, in simple terms, the hip joint is most commonly thought of as a simple ball and socket joint, but in reality it's much more complex than that. The hip joint supports uh, the weight of the body through all activities, both while sitting, standing, walking, and running. And it's extremely important, along with all the muscles around the region of the hip joint, uh, to maintain posture and balance. There's a very intimate relationship between the, the hip joint, the muscles around the hip joint, as well as the lower back, the spine, and the legs. Okay. And so what are some causes of hip pain? There are many uh, causes of hip pain, um, both soft tissue and from the joint itself. Um, some tissue problems around the joint would be muscle strains, um, cartilage tears around the region of the hip joint, uh, and also mechanical processes within the hip itself or degenerative conditions, of which there are many. The most common one and one of the most debilitating is osteoarthritis of the hip, which is simply usually thought of and referred to as wear and tear of the hip joint. Okay, so wear and tear. So are there any preventative things that we do since it is wear, wear and tear? In general, uh, one wants to promote uh, a healthy lifestyle. So a regular low impact exercise routine that will strengthen the muscles around the hip joint can dramatically reduce the forces through the joint itself. Um, maintaining a healthy body weight, the hip joint through every step we take uh, endures about three to five times body weight forces that are passed through the joint. So the average person takes millions, millions of steps through their lifetime and reducing uh, body weight by just a few pounds can dramatically reduce the, the lifetime of forces through the hip joint. Wow, okay. So if we are trying to be active and it's still, we're still experiencing pain, when is it time to see a doctor? Any aches and pains around the region of the hip that last uh, more than a few weeks or uh, begin to limit the simple activities of daily living, getting through a work day, aches and pains that keep you awake at night that don't respond to simple measures such as over-the-counter Tylenol and anti-inflammatories, it's probably time to see somebody. Okay, so are there any conservative or non-surgical treatments for hip pain? Um, well, surgery is always the last resort, so there are extensive measures that we can uh, go through with a patient um, before it comes to discussing surgery. Um, uh, typically, a prescription anti-inflammatory may be tried uh, along with Tylenol. Uh, physical therapy to strengthen those muscles around the hip joint that I already mentioned, uh, weight loss if patients are overweight, and when we start talking about invasive procedures, a uh, cortisone injection is, is the most simple but can, be, uh, dramatic, can have remarkable effects on reducing pain and inflammation in the joint itself. Okay, and so if that doesn't work and it's still hurting, when is the time for hip replacement surgery? Well, it's, it's an intensely personal decision for every patient. Every patient's uh, tolerance of pain is different and their perception of pain and the dysfunction that they have in their daily life is different. Um, generally speaking, once all of the conservative measures have been exhausted and patients still have pain that limit even the most simple of activities, uh, sometimes uh, simple things like getting in and out of a car, going up and down stairs, putting on shoes and socks, it may be time to talk about hip replacement surgery. Okay, so is there a certain age that you should maybe consider surgery? Is there a best age for it? Well, of course, um, we like our patients to wait as long as they can. Older patients generally will only need a hip replacement performed one time. Hip replacements are artificial joints. They're not gonna last a lifetime. So generally, the older a patient is, the longer that hip is gonna last them and the less likely they are need to need additional surgery in the future once the hip wears out. Having said that, um, pain and dysfunction can be, um, patients can be dis completely disabled. So generally speaking, it's better to undergo hip replacement surgery to avoid a situation where, where a patient is completely disabled and incapacitated so that they can get back to a productive life and a productive citizen in our society. That's great. Thank you. This was very informative 
to me and I know it will be informative to others that are watching on our website. So thank you, Dr. Jason Hall at Tuckahoe Orthopedics here in Richmond. Thank you. Thank you.